Well, I'm uh, another day older and a power supply richer. Um, ultimately, the EVGA 850G3 purely will not fit in this case. Um, it's a 150 by 150 millimeter. I had to go out and grab a Corsair TX750M power supply because that is 150 by 140. And that 140 millimeter length is really the absolute maximum that you can put in this case. If I had more time for this build, I would probably order Corsair's brand new small form factor power supply. Um, they just put out a 750 watt power supply um, in the small form factor, which makes it, you know, significantly shorter than this, which would just give you a little bit more room for cable management. I was able to kind of put some things together and test it, and I believe that everything is going to fit snugly but it'll fit. I took a little bit of time and put the motherboard in, put the power supply in, um, put a few of the case fans in and all that kind of stuff just to test fit the case with this new power supply. But I believe we can make everything work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the power supply back in now and you can see how I've routed the power supply power cable itself. Uh, they have one that actually plugs in internally. Uh, so the power supply sits over here and then this cable plugs in over here. Let's go ahead and finish putting this all together. If the availability on the Corsair power supply, that small form factor one, was a little bit quicker, I probably would have snagged it. I may actually replace this one with that at some point just to have a little bit more room. But for now, this is gonna work just fine. Got the power supply all screwed in. So this plugs in there. Um, the cable is a little snug, but it works pretty well. I don't really have any complaints. Once you actually get it in there, you just kind of have to push. There we go. And then if we pop that out and slide it, ta-da. All right. Power supply cable is in and the switch is on. Definitely got to make sure that happens before you close everything up because our next step is actually to put the top panel back on with our radiator right here. Slide that up and out of the way. This is a little tricky. I did have to notch uh, some space out here, on, again, on the case in order to fit the tubes for the uh, cooling system here. And that requires a little finesse slash force <laughs> to get that to slot right back in. Go ahead and screw the top panel back down since that's hopefully the last time we're gonna have to take it off. Time has come for us to do the 9900K. All right, that's in. Let's see what else we need to do. 
this uh, case does have a couple, um, well, I guess more than a couple, but not all of them are very accessible. Uh, holes in the back panel here, uh, the side panel, I should say, in order to route cables. All right, that just cleans up the cables on the inside of the case here a little bit better. Next thing we're gonna do is get the heatsink uh, onto the processor. I've got some thermal paste here from Noctua. Put a little dab on that and get that screwed down. Never use too much thermal paste. It's counterproductive. does get a little <laughs> difficult for it. There we go. So then once that's done, you just want to make sure that they are all relatively tight and you want to do that in a zigzag pattern or cross. So go across and then down and then across again. Processor and heat sink are in and you know, that's not that bad just floating right there. But we do need to put the fan cables through one of these access ports. I can't flee. next let's go ahead and get the video card put in again we're rocking the Nvidia GeForce RTX 2080 Ti in here clicky clicky
I guess it is that time where we start plugging stuff in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is get all of our fans wired and get the cabling all cleaned up and run out the back and all that jazz. Um, the chassis fan on this motherboard is a little difficult to get to, um, but I want to run the two fans on the bottom and then the front case fan um, all from that one port. Um, so we're going to attempt <laughs> to get this plugged in there and then route it back out. Think. So if I pull the power cable out, um, I just unscrewed the two screws holding the extension in. Um, that gives me a little bit more room to get in there. So we're going to see if I can magically route this down there now. I'm going to grab the metal spudger tool here, which if you're not familiar with them, they are awesome. Get into really tight places and help you poke at stuff. Next thing I wanted to do was actually plug the USB in from the EVGA heatsink to the motherboard itself into one of the USB headers here. Unfortunately, the routing holes for that are actually buried underneath the GPU. So I got to pull the GPU out to then put that cable in and then put the GPU back. In fact, I'm probably going to leave the GPU out for, <laughs> for the time being just so I can do some more cable management. Okay, so then this just plugs directly into the EVGA heatsink. It's got a micro USB connection on it. And then all I have to do is put the cable through the hole and then back in the hole. <laughs> that way it's up and out of the way and we don't have to worry about it. CPU power is now plugged into the motherboard. I might just put a hole in this side here because this case is not cooperating. Not exactly advisable to do that with parts in the computer. Oops, that was entirely too complicated. And I'm definitely gonna have to tape those because they come out with no effort whatsoever. So I'll go grab some Kapton tape. If you're not familiar with Kapton tape, it's a very expensive ESD safe, electrostatic discharge safe tape, specifically meant for use in electronics and computers. That's what I'm gonna be using in here to ensure that our EVGA cables do not come unplugged. And with that last piece of Kapton tape, our CPU and radiator fans are plugged into the heatsink. So now we just need to plug the heatsink into the motherboard. Okay, that's plugged in now as well. Since this is the cable running from the chassis fan uh, header on the motherboard, we're gonna Y it in order to um, use three different fans um, from that one port. I need a Y cable. All right, so we've got everything plugged in now, except for the rest of the motherboard cables and the graphics card.
Okay, that's plugged in. I guess we can try and, I don't know, tuck this down this way. All right, so the next super lame cable route is this stuff. This one cannot fit through the hole where they're intending it to go. And that's their cable. It plugs into the motherboard right about here, but this doesn't go through that hole. It does if you don't have a motherboard in it. Like, who comes up with this crap? Yay. got all our cable routing figured out. I'm gonna go ahead and screw down the video card and then we'll get power run to that. And then it's just a matter of cable management. Sweet. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. It really does help us out. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. And if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you get notified on all our new videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more of our content, click the video over here or even the video over here. You'll enjoy both of them. Until next time.